So we're here with Lucy Nisley, the author of Relish and many other books. Thank you very much for meeting with us. My pleasure. Thank you. So let's start with Relish from first second. It has become really an international bestseller. It, you know, topped the New York Times list here in the United States. And then it, it's been translated into French and German as well. Is that what I understand? German, um, Spanish, Italian, and Korean, I think. So have you noticed as it gets translated into these languages that you're getting a lot of feedback on the kind of foods that it was, that people are commenting like, wow, you really eat that? Or, hmm, that sounds interesting because... You know, especially like Korean and Spanish, all those are very different foods from the kind of books that are in Relish. Right. I'm not sure the Korean one is out yet. The Spanish one is coming out. Uh, so I guess it remains to be seen. But uh, I went to France uh, for the French release, and it was really funny because the thing they latched onto was this, like, one chapter where I go to McDonald's, and they were like, oh, she's American. She writes about food. She writes about McDonald's. So every interview I did, they were like, do you want to go to McDonald's? And I was like, no, I'm in France. <laughs> It's been an interesting thing because both myself and Carrie, our camera person, um, we both bought your books and we both latched on to different recipes. I went out, or both of us went out and bought a lamb so that we could have the lamb, and then Carrie's latched on to the chai recipe. So are you finding that people are connecting with different recipes as you go along? or Definitely, yeah. Um, it's funny, a lot of people who sort of are like, I don't cook ever – They'll latch on to, like, the sangria recipe or, you know, something really simpler in the book, which is nice because there's sort of more complex things like the lamb. There's a little simpler like the sangria or, um, like, sushi rolls are actually shockingly easy to make. And, uh, and so it's really cool to see people who are like, I've never cooked before. I burn water, you know, and, and they're cooking with the book. It's great. So your next book that you have coming out, Age of License, follows you in a trip through Europe. Um, and from what I understand, there's all sorts of little things and food in there as well. Can you tell us a little bit about Age of License? Sure. Um, First Second does this thing where once the book is finished, they wait a while before it comes out. So I had this period of time where the book was finished, but it wasn't out yet. So I was sort of recovering from some heartbreak, and I decided to travel, use the time period to just take every opportunity to travel. And I was really lucky. I was invited to this Norwegian comics festival in Norway, in Bergen, Norway. And, uh, and they flew me out there, and they said, oh, we'll fly you back from anywhere in Europe same price. Uh, so I said, great, I'll just spend a month sort of traveling around and exploring. And uh, my first book, French Milk, was a travelogue about Paris. So I sort of was trying to kind of reinvent the travelogue thing, get back to my roots. And, uh, and so I kept a travelogue while I was on this trip. And it wound up being kind of this crazy exploration of youth and adventure and sex and romance and fun. And, uh, and then the following February, I went on another trip uh, with my ailing grandparents uh, on an elderly cruise ship, uh, just sort of trying to take care of them, make it a little bit better for them. And that was a trip about, you know, responsibility and mortality and aging and family and stuff. And so it's this interesting pairing of these two books from Fanographics. One is sort of one side of being in your early adulthood and the other side of being in your early adulthood of sort of responsibility and being a grown up, that sort of thing. So it's, it's these really uh, kind of interesting pairing of these two books. So Age of License was more of you, and I don't want to say coming of age, but rediscovering a new or a different part of you that had been away for a while. And then this other one, what's the other one called? The Cruise? That one's called Displacement. Displacement. And so that one's more of just looking at life as where it can go, yeah? Sure, yeah. I mean, they're, they're both very similar travelogues in terms of the way the style that they're written in. And they're all uh, watercolored and, uh, and hand-drawn and handwritten at, at the time. Very immediate stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of a, a lot of my work, actually, is just sort of about being in your uh, early adulthood and sort of finding your way and finding your identity. Now, this is different from another trip you took, which was the wild trip, right? So tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, I've always been really fascinated with Oscar Wilde. Um, I think I started in high school when you sort of latch on to authors and sort of begin to romanticize them. And uh, I had a big fascination with him. And into my adulthood, I, I was always kind of interested in why I liked him and why other people sort of found such, uh, such, such something to kind of latch on to, to this Victorian writer who, you know, so many writers from that time period have kind of lapsed into obscurity, but Wilde sort of has this cultural sway still. So I wanted to uh, sort of 
take a pilgrimage to the places where he worked and lived and explore that period of his life and, and sort of try to understand why he still has such sway over me personally and sort of why he has such cultural sway. Um, so I, I wanted to take this research trip, and the hope was that uh, Travelogue would come of it. And uh, what happened was I sort of, I sort of lost interest in him over the course of this trip. I sort of became really jaded about him. A lot of the people that I met with were like, "Oh, I liked him in high school, and he's so overwrought now." And it was like, "I liked him in high school too. Interesting." So last year. So last year. Um, but uh, I still love him, and it was a really interesting trip. Uh, and I came back with lots of notes and writing about the trip and sketches and reference photographs, and my camera was promptly stolen. So I lost all of my reference photographs, and uh, I was like, I'm not sure this is actually a book. So this, you know, the, I do a lot of travelogging, I do a lot of travelog work, and uh, sometimes they don't sort of coalesce. So somewhere in my desk right now, I have all of the notes and the sketches and what little photographs I could cobble together from what I'd like already put online uh, in the hopes that someday it'll kind of coalesce into a book, perhaps when I go back or when I sort of reconnect to Wild. Um, but for now, it's sort of just nebulous book form right now. So it's just sort of sitting out there, and who knows? who knows? So one of the things that's changed over your life is you found some love, is what I understand. And now you are not only planning a wedding, but you're starting to collect wedding stories. How is that going, and what kinds of things are you hearing about? Uh, well, so far, it's only begun to be a few wedding stories. Uh, I'm getting married in about a month and a half, so I'm in that kind of, like, crunch crazy mode. Uh, I have uh, a book about, I'm making a book about wedding planning, sort of this uh, feminist geek tomboy take on wedding planning. And uh, I've been sort of interviewing various people who've gone through the process already and talked to them about what worked for them and what didn't work for them, if they had any funny disasters. Um, and for the most part, it's it, people don't really remember the horrible stuff, which is great to know, because right now I'm just like, this is insane. This is totally nuts. Um, so it's it, that's been the one nice thing is that people are like, don't worry about the details. And I'm like, don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> so... Um so other than getting married, uh, what else do you have coming up? Uh, well, I'm working on these four books. I have the, uh, the one about Norway, uh, the one about the elderly crews. I'm working on the wedding one and planning the wedding at the same time. And then I also have another book from First Second that I've been working on about high school and uh, arts education, basically. It's, a, it's sort of a memoir along the lines of Relish uh, about my experiences going to uh, four different high schools over the course of four years. And, uh, and being sort of one of those kids that at the time was sort of learning, classified as learning disabled, but uh, the truth was that I was just an artist. I just learned differently and uh, was really rescued by arts education, librarians and art teachers and uh, English teachers and, um, and how important that was to me in my life. So this is a sort of a longer, more serious project that I'm sort of working on in the long term. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us. All the best of luck to you. And who knows, maybe we'll get a travel log about the honeymoon. Oh, I hope so. Thank you. <laughs>